2017 Mini Countryman Cooper S Review From 16,420 pounds 6. Point. All new bigger Mini continues to make a curious, flawed crossover hatchback, though it's more compelling to drive than some and more practical than it used to be. What is it? BMW's Big Mini, the Countryman, was the car introduced seven years ago to lead the transformation of the firm from early noughties era must-have super mini to fully-fledged brand in its own right. And that it hasn't so far done that very well maybe because it's not immediately obvious exactly what it has added to the mini range. By mixing too many vehicle types and relying too much on established notions of what a mini is, rather than what it might be, the last countryman ultimately failed to carve out a recognizable identity of its own. And, while it's a bigger and better car in some ways, the new one fails in much the same way. The Mini Countryman's intended as a crossover, of course, that much you can tell from the angry stare of its angular headlamps and the various bits of SUV aping body kit sprinkled about it. And yet it may be the least crossed crossover you're ever likely to come across. With dimensions a match for a normal family hatchback every which way but for a slightly raised ride height and roofline, the countryman's only slightly raised belt and should airlines leave plenty of room to doubt whether it's intended as Mini's answer to an Audi Q2 or just a normal A3. And then you drive it and the messages become even more confusing. The countryman's engine range mirrors that of the Mini Clubman, starting with the 134BHP, 3-cylinder turbo petrol Cooper, including the 148BHP diesel Cooper D at mid-level, and, for now, topping out with Cooper S and Cooper SD models with 187 and 189BHP respectively. A four-wheel drive plug-in hybrid model dubbed Cooper SE, with 221BHP of combined petrol and electric oomph, comes later this year. Behind that, a top-of-the-range 228BHP Countryman JCW will follow, also four-wheel drive with Mini's all-four clutch-based four-wheel drive system optional elsewhere in the range. What's it like? One of Mini's main aims was to create a more spacious, practical, comfortable, materially rich, and mature-feeling interior than you get elsewhere in the model range. It has delivered in some, but not all, of those respects. The new Countryman is 200 mm longer than the last one, with 75 mm having gone into the wheelbase to the benefit of cabin length, and much of the rest into a bigger boot. The latter is now big enough, at 450 liters, so put a Nissan Qashqai to shame, and expandable via the standard sliding and folding 40 hours 20 minutes and 40 seconds back row seats. There's enough room in both rows of seats for proper adults, and plenty of headroom for taller occupants although the car's hallmark recumbent seating position and its thin seat cushion still make the cabin less comfy and convenient than is the crossover class norm. Many's attempts to lift the countryman's cabin ambience to a more sophisticated level are also mixed. Cabin quality is impressive in places but the car's plastics become quite hard and brittle at lower levels, while those illuminated dashboard and door trims don't really add much. To drive, the Countryman confounds your expectations of a modern crossover hatchback by its conformity to Mini's own modern dynamic template. This is a firm riding, direct handling, relatively highly strung prospect that feels less like any sort of jacked up utility car and more like a typical hot hatchback. Mini's chassis engineers may well consider this a roaring success, having translated the infamous go kart feel of its smaller models onto a taller car with a longish wheelbase. But if the intention was to broaden the dynamic reach of the firm's model range here, the achievement's quite plainly a lot less. Even on optional fit adaptive dampers, the Countryman handles anything other than millpon smooth tarmac with a tiresome restlessness, suffering with plenty of head toss, tram lining and bump steer on quicker B roads, and feeling wooden and unyielding on broken town roads. It steers very quickly and heavily, handles more coherently than the last countryman on account of tighter body control and slightly improved steering feedback, but like so many of its siblings remains more compelling to drive when you're just punting around than it is when you examine it at greater speed.
The Cooper S turbocharged engine feels quite strong and has useful accessible torque, but works better with the optional 8-speed automatic gearbox when driven at a relaxed pace than in manual mode when pressing on. Mini's ALL4 driveline, meanwhile, comes up with all the traction that the car needs even in slippery conditions, but isn't clever enough to augment the car's fundamental handling poise on the road, which could certainly be better balanced. Should I buy one? Overall, things seem to have improved a little without changing a great deal for countrymen owners. This car's main mission, curious as it may continue to appear outside of a mini showroom, is to represent Cowley's much-loved Super Mini at 150% scale, not to bring people into the Mini ownership orbit as much as to prevent them from leaving it. But, while it may be exactly what a Mini owner wants from his next family car, the Countryman's not our idea of a great modern crossover hatchback, not, at least, on first acquaintance with a Cooper S model. Cheaper, Simpler versions may better balance the ride comfort and ease of use desired of a crossover against the handling dynamism we all expect of a Mini but even now it's clear that the wait for a really good Mini crossover, designed with the freedom and vision that the increasingly important segment deserves, will go on. Mini Countryman Cooper SALL4 Auto Location, High Wycombe, UK, on sale, now, price, £28,025. Engine, 4 CYLS in line, 1,998 cubic centimeters, turbocharged petrol, power, 189 bhp at 5,000 6,000 rpm, torque, 207 pounds foot at 1350 4600 rpm. Gearbox, 8 SPD automatic, curb weight, 1,530 kilograms, 0 to 62 miles per hour, 7.2 SEC, top speed, 138 miles per hour, economy, 44.1 mpg, CO2 slash tax band, 150g slash km, 29%. Rivals, Audi Q2 1.4 TFC Sport, Mercedes GLA 254 MATIC Sport.